Moscow and Washington say they hope that the FBI arrests of alleged Russian agents will not affect relations between the two. For more insight on this, we're now joined by former MI5 officer Annie Machon from Dusseldorf. Hello to you. So, um, the FBI says the suspects have been under investigation since 2004. If so, why has it taken so long to charge them? What, what, what do you make of the timing here? Well, I think it's very interesting, of course. I mean, there have been reports that they, they've said they've been aware of the ring in, since, since 2000, in fact. So, yes, the fact that it comes hard on the heels of a very successful meeting between the US and the Russian presidents in Washington is interesting politically. But I would suggest also that we could sort of delve behind the scenes a little bit. First of all, the intelligence agencies in the US have been very much under attack over the last uh, year or two for a whole number of reasons. Their involvement in things like extraordinary rendition, torture, surveillance of domestic political activists, things like that. So to go to an old-fashioned, good old-fashioned Cold War spy story and regain a bit of credibility, I think it's probably uh, something that they would aspire to. So this is very much sort of familiar territory. Um, everyone loves a good spy story and I think this is pure propaganda. But I think there's also another aspect to that as well and that's very much the inside of you. Um, within the intelligence world there are competing agencies. I think at the last count there are at least 17 agencies in the US. And they all vie for position and prestige and resources and staff numbers. So, of course, if the FBI can produce this wonderful result suddenly out of the blue, then their credit will skyrocket and they will go up the pecking order. So I think there's a whole uh, range of layers behind this sudden arrest, the political only being one of them. So a possible PR stunt here. Uh, let's, let's continue. Neither Moscow nor Washington want this to affect their relations. Now, in your experience, how possible is it for intelligence and politics to be separated in, in this way? <laughs> Very difficult indeed, because the intelligence agencies do like to meddle in politics. Um, sometimes you do get rogue elements within agencies who will go off and do their own thing. Um, I don't think in this case that's what happened. I think it's more likely that perhaps more hardline factions within the American administration perhaps egged on the uh, FBI to try and get them to come up with this result because of the need to keep a sort of strategy of tension between the USA and Russia. Of course, if you have a strategy of tension, then what you get is um, additional military air bases um, in the Central Asia area and things like that, which of course is very good for big business, particularly companies like Halliburton that tends to build and supply these sort of bases to the US government. And many people who used to be involved in the um, old administration, the neocon administration, of course, are very closely linked to those sort of companies. So I think, um, one, it's a political advantage for the hardliners, and two, it's a great economic advantage, potentially, to a number of big US corporations. Oh, you've given us some uh, fascinating insight there into the, the workings of the back wings of Washington, but we've heard about um, the US uh, Department of State trying to, um, sorry, the State Department distancing, distancing itself from the Justice Department's decision. Uh, what kind of an inside game does this indicate to you? Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, something about the whole story doesn't ring quite true to me. Um, I used to be a fan of the um, spy writer Graham Greene, who was a former intelligence officer. He wrote in the mid of, middle of the last century. He wrote a very good book called Our Man in Havana, where an MI6 officer in the novel um, builds up a fake spy ring in order to gain kudos and extra money from his political masters in the, in, um, the UK. So I'm wondering if there might be some element of something like this going on. I'm not too sure. But I think also it's very disingenuous. I mean, I think most people can see that it's a political hot potato within the different departments in the US. And it's very disingenuous that they're making such a big story out of this in the media. Because, of course, other spy rings have been caught in the US in the last decade. Most notably, the um, so-called dancing Israelis who were arrested shortly after 9-11. They were seen celebrating uh, the collapse of the Twin Towers. And also the alleged art student spy ring, which was rounded up in 2002. And they, again, uh, were supposedly Israeli um, Mossad agents. Now, both of these spy rings weren't prosecuted, and in fact, the stories have been quietly removed from things like Fox News websites and things. And the spies, or alleged spies, were just quietly deported back to Israel. There was no political hoo ha, there was no media hoo ha, and there was no prosecutions. So I think whatever happens to these alleged spies, and you know, let's bear in mind that they are innocent until proven guilty, whatever happens to them is done for political reasons. All right, very interesting insight there indeed. Former MI5 officer Annie Machon from Dusseldorf. Thank you.